This content contains podcasts. This adult. This adult contains podcast content. Adult content, be advised. Enjoy the episode. And it seems to me you lived your life like a penis in the <laughs> What? Nice to be recording in the daylight. This has, I think, never happened. Um, Maybe in summer when it's in day summer, forever. We have re- recorded in daylight. But we've done it in my room with like a big board up. No, we've done, we recorded all of last summer in this living room. Oh, yes. No, you're right. <laughs> yeah, we, we've done about eight episodes like this. You're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good okay. morning. Except it, except it, well, it was daylight, but it wasn't daytime. Yes, that's so. right. Yeah, we're doing it in the morning. Good, good morning, Good morning. Laura. Yes, <laughs> good morning. A we bit, know you're there. A bit more risky, like, because uh, doing it at night kind of um, el- eliminates some noises going on. But Namely construction. We have got a ridiculous amount of work going on nearby. <laughs> They asked me to redo that because I dox, I dox myself. <laughs> no <laughs> clues. If I could follow the trail, someone else could follow the trail. <laughs> might as well name the construction company. We might as well just put the address there. Just we to... might as well say bum. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. We're having a nice breakfast. We're episode. having a breakfast episode. Me yeah. and Laura have been out to acquire breakfast items, which Laura is obviously now rustling as if she couldn't have put that on a fucking plate before she came in here. You're right. I didn't think. Oh, leave her alone. <laughs> it's okay. She's carrying on though. <laughs> Why don't you tell everyone what you've got, Laura? Uh, Cinnamon Social from Olenstein. Yeah, not to be those people, but if you have got an Olenstein near you and you haven't had the social, it's pretty good. We were initially so grumpy about another fucking coffee shop being on our Oh, high a street, middle, right? another middle class bakery and slash said, coffee oh, shop. It's so dark in there. It's so cold and austere. But actually, it's, it's the best Firstly, one on the street. It is actually it? the best one on the street. It's fucking toasty. Most of the people that work there are really nice. They're vegan. Oh, they're really delicious. Nice. Yes. Lots it of is. It is normally very full of very fresh babies yeah, though really, really babies love babies. their coffee didn't you know <laughs> their baby chinos. Their baby chinos danish coffee <laughs> danish words all over it so they they write bread like brud <laughs> <laughs> brother may i have one brud? everything in there is is <laughs> well not everything there's a lot of danish words yeah lots of umlauts and yeah so it's like one of our favorite breads i cannot pronounce Christian Havner. If you've had that one, though, it's actually really... It's really okay. salty bread, but it's very delicious. Anyway, how are you guys today? I'm doing great. I've got... Laura's up before 1pm. Hey! I'm incredible. Never... Well, you are. You are up before 1pm. Yeah, I know, but you phrased that like 1pm as an average. 1pm is not an average. Okay, sorry. 12pm. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember um, this weekend, she was like... Live messaging us, her getting out of bed. I also just got a new mattress topper that I am so happy about. So my bed is now just so comfortable. It's like a cage. It's just you don't want to get out because it's warm and so comfortable. And you're like, why would I get out into the cold, harsh world? So like, why? I I'm s- awake. I'm just on my phone. I snapped at Laura yesterday because she tried to give me her old mattress topper, which was a kind thing to do, but I just couldn't handle having more things in my room. Hey, Matt, you, I don't think you actually snapped at me. I think you more snapped at Meg. Because yeah, I was kinda, like, kinda you kinda do did. you at your pace. Uh-huh. And I came in and went, why the fuck is this in here? I didn't say that. <laughs> I was like, I said, who does this belong to? Because it had been on a chair and it is like either it's like anyone in this flat to leave something on a chair for ages and oh, forget it about is. it yeah it is we're all fair. guilty of that so yeah. i just wanted to know who and there's who still it baking trays by the front door no i took those okay, down cool. <laughs> yeah about we 18 got, months yeah, we had we a baking got some, tray by the front door we got some new baking trays and the old ones we put by the front door meaning to take them down to the trash and they stayed there for about 18 months long enough that the new baking tray we bought at the time to replace those baking trays now looks like the old <laughs> baking tray. It's baked. It's it is, baked. It's a ran through baking tray. 
Yes, anyway. So what are we doing today? We're doing Tracy Beaker Series 2. Yeah, we always said we would. We always said we would. And I'm feeling a lot less... Do you remember I was very stressed about doing mm-hmm. Series 1? And I think it's because there was so much to cover with Series 1 because it was what it is and who Jacqueline Wilson is and all of that. And now we've got that out of the way and we can just go straight into Series 2 and I'm feeling really good about it. So we covered all the like info about Tracy Beaker in the first episode, like who Jacqueline Wilson is, the background. So if you want to hear that stuff, listen to Episode 1. Yeah. Wait, sorry. Series 1. Episode <laughs> Tracy Beaker, not Episode 1. Episode Tracy Beaker. Well, it looks like Tracy Beaker really is back. Yeah. yeah. I'm back and I'm back. Don't even think of switching off. I know where you live. What did we think? I I enjoyed it more than the fir- the first series. Yeah, so I enjoyed the first series, and then I thought, me and Elsie watched most of it. <laughs> yeah, we we watched most of series two last night, and I so we were skipping towards the more important episodes, like the ones where Louise gets fostered. Um, Tracy almost gets fostered. What did you think, Laura? As someone that I think you, I also, you barely remember it, right? I didn't watch it. Oh, okay. Um, I think I also there's what like how many episodes? Twelve? Twenty six. Twenty six. Well, twenty six, fifteen minutes, right. thirteen half hours. Right. I watch. I think I watched most of it as well, actually, because yeah. Um, I did write something down. Um, I did prefer this to the first season, but like some of the same issues I have, like I. <sighs> I am not a kid, so I, the way Tracy acts bothers me in a way as an adult because, like, I. But I also fully understand why she's acting the way she's acting. But uh, one thing I realized in watching this, yeah, so I can't speak to the accuracy of this actually being what care homes are like. But I think a lot of Tracy's behavior comes down to the care home children really valuing misbehavior, like sneakiness, getting away with stuff, doing pranks and stuff um yeah there is a, there is a lot of that where you know a new care a care worker comes and they're all seeing who can yeah but it's i feel like a lot of that is not so much them acting out and it's more like them being bored and it's a kid's show and they're kids no yeah 100 so, percent. yeah but like the the reason that tracy is so much how she is is because the kids in this environment really value that behavior and like her playing into it makes these people who are the most consistent people in her life the ones that are actually closest to being her family like her more or look up to her more or admire her more because there's a lot of talk about her being the best one yeah. and she's the baddest and yeah. she's the best and it's so like it, a sort of pecking order kind yeah of so thing. she like thrives off of that but i also like and they actually depict this really well because that explains so much um and yeah i just i didn't get that so much. i think i was a little bit overly annoyed with her in the first season and this one i was like oh i get it now she she like really vehemently wants to be liked but also really doesn't want to care and you see like every episode you see her like something happens and she pretends not to care and then she writes it like she always makes right whatever she's done she also i think she's terrified of like f- her version of like commitment like because no one's ever done no one's actually ever gone the full mile everyone's left her whether it be the kids getting fostered a foster parent giving up on her etc no one's actually ever gone the full way so it's like if she does something like it's we've talked i don't know if we talked about this last episode but something you do when you've had like trauma and stuff is you try and establish boundaries by pushing people because you want to know where the line is. Yeah, I think we did We did talk yeah. about this. And she does this with everyone. I'm going to my mum's. Just me. Hello? You can't leave me here on my own. The authorities won't like it. I'm not leaving you here. Where then? Look, just for a bit. Until the repairs. I'm taking you back to... Take me back to the dumping ground. I I preferred... I liked this series... In some ways, I liked it better than series one, and in some ways, I preferred series one. I, I found series one much more emotional because 
all the kids are younger. Mm. Like they're all, there's like one young kid, Dolly, in this one, and the rest are all. She's so cute. She's so cute. (laughs) What about all the good times? All the fights and disappointments and people laughing at you at school because you wear rubbish clothes and live in a stinky children's home with stinky children. I don't stink. I smell like cornflakes. They're, they're all generally older. They, they were maybe like eight or nine on average in series one and now they're like 12, 13. We've also got the... So we lost... Um, Zach and Ryan and Peter and Maxie because the production moved to Cardiff. Mm. So they're in a different house now. Um, And we gained Lol and Bouncer. Get your pad out. I want rubber and more baboo with it. That's my brother. Long time favourite. God, that's why so many of them are Welsh or from Bristol. Yeah. <laughs> are, are, are they brothers? Yes. yes. Okay, I thought so. You okay. couldn't tell to look at them. No. <laughs> I only realised because they referred to the, their aunt as the same person. Yeah. I was like, oh, you guys are related. Okay. Um, You've got Amber, who comes in in maybe episode three or something. Uh, You've got Nathan and Dolly. I've got a lot to say about Nathan. I love Nathan. I slipped out my hands. That was Duke's favourite mug. Oh, terrific. So, is there anyone left in the dumping ground you haven't got on the wrong side of? You. True, but we haven't properly met. Nathan, pleased to meet you, Tracy. Feel free to hate me as soon as you like. Or I could help you. How? You've just got off to a bad start. You can soon turn things around tonight at supper. I was supposed to be off by then. Pity. Surprising everyone at Saturday's Silly Hour would have made you a lot more popular. Silly Hour? The staff always do silly things at Saturday supper for the kids. So laugh makes everyone feel like one big happy family. What sort of silly things? So Nathan's the trainee care worker that sort of wants to be one of the kids. Mm. I love Nathan. He's so good. He's so much fun. He's so cute. And he's given so much shit by um the kids no and uh, the care workers no what's her name lame no oh um jenny yeah, jenny yeah. he's given loads of shit by jenny for no apparent reason it's like it, yeah he's he's a bit like truant and he and i don't know if it's just like coming from the day and age that we work in where it's like it, it makes you look bad as a boss to be this kind of person but it's like he his girlfriend comes and like sees him off at the door and jenny's got an issue with that or i think it's because jenny really really wants him to pass i i get that but she's his boss right and in this day and age or like for, for our generation anyway a boss that is like on your ass about you being two minutes late or taking a personal call once in a while is um that is very negative and we don't like it. <laughs> I do think stuff like that, those kind of like managerial stuff, I think, yeah, she was a little overly harsh. But I also very understand where she's coming from with how he behaves as a care worker. Their job is not to be the kid's friend. And that's actually kind of dangerous is maybe the wrong word there, but it's like it's a tricky path to tread because you aren't their friend. You have to care for them in a way. Like it's the whole parent friend thing and it's like you need a parent more than you need a friend when you're a child yeah but i think he is like a parent he's just like a fun parent and he he engages with the kids in a way that the kids will listen to him like he's he's he the first episode he's in he shows them that pretty much uh, uh, until the very end only like only tracy beaker can get him like they can't play he's tri- wise to their he's tricks. wise to their tricks and i don't think he's given enough credit for like w- how much he actually does for them because he, you you see him like playing with them but then you hear of like the at the end of the series this kind of suggestion like you know he's not written his essay so he might be failed and might not be able to stay there and do- uh, they're like who's gonna read dolly her um books every night 
And it turns out he that she doesn't have any. He's just been making up the stories. Yeah, and, Je- and Jenny's like, well, I can do it. And he's like, she's like, no, but we've got to the bit with the wolves and you won't do the voices properly. Well, the it's like mum strangling the werewolf or something. He's very good at the very small details yeah. that children really appreciate. I think he's... And- great at getting on each kid's level yeah individually I think it, this is the very first episode that nathan arrives so the episode one of series two tracy sets accidentally sets cam's house on fire and because cam has no option because of money and stuff yeah. she has to go live with her mum tracy has to go back to the care home the dumping the ground. dumping <laughs> ground and tracy smashes cam's favorite teapot that she had taken back to the dumping ground and cam's like that's mine i love that why you're stealing from me i can't handle any more dishonesty and in this episode at the very beginning cam is told by um jenny like maybe she just wanted something to remember you by and cam's really upset like oh i couldn't even work that out i'm i can't even pretend to be someone's mum like there's a lot in this series there's a lot of cam crying and working out who she yeah. is like she's more of a child than i remember watching it like there's so much lovely tracy and cam stuff like they're just talking to each other like <laughs> friends and it's so nice i was promised two ice creams i got one and a hat shell out the kid oh family life you can keep it here here still louise deserves some love yeah we all do that's true. So now we've fixed the PC, you could finish your homework. Oh, thanks a million. <laughs> and at the end of that episode, Nathan's first episode, he glues the teapot back together. I don't know if Cam's quite up to seeing that again. It's for Tracy, what you said about needing something to remember Cam by. We can go home when you finished it. Will you give it to Tracy for me? Be dry in about half an hour? Yeah, sure. Oh, and Nathan? Yeah? Nice work. Just a bit of glue and a steady hand. It's not what I meant. It, to me, that was... She's keeping that because she wants... She knows that Cam loves that teapot. She wants Cam to have a reason to come back to see Tracy. Yeah. Which... Because she because Tracy doesn't think she's enough. So she needs yeah. something of Cam's. But she always will. Like Yeah, Cam... no, but this is this is yeah. yeah, no, I know, but like there's like in I think maybe episode five, like very soon into the series, Tracy and Cam make up immediately and Cam is like visiting her and taking her out and it's they're just like it's just like a foster mum. Mm. Is the Ben kid Ben's uh, still there? Is he does he live near Cam? I he just hangs around dumping okay. around. Like there's there's a lot of stuff about the care home being very strict in who comes in and out for Except obvious for reasons. <laughs> but Ben just seems to live. There. It's probably because I imagine he's a child for a start. Yeah. But it's not like he's an adult that's being vetted, right? Or not vetted, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and he's friends with all of them as he well. He is friends with all of them. But I imagine with Tracy, it's very pick your battles. And if he's there and he'll yeah. entertain her, then that's, you know, more good than bad, really. <laughs> but also, I was annoyed with Ben this series because he's... He's found friends in Lol and Bouncer and he sort of sides with them a lot. Like, oh, Tracy won't be able to beat you. She's just a girl. There's a lot of Ben being is... more on the side of... I mean, Lol and Bouncer are adorable and they're nice to Tracy. Mm. They're friends. But when Ben's there, it's sort of like two tribes. Well, that's, I think, accurate to boys and girls. Yeah. Honestly, like... I just don't I, I completely see that happening realistically because when you are that age it is like oh girls even if your best friend is a girl boys are still better than girls right still knocked about cam dumping her back here she's gonna set fires in the kitchen ah <laughs> you lose boy still probably miles better than what tracy could do <laughs> okay then Ugh. bring it on they're not. So I want to talk about James Cartwright, who plays Nathan. Mm-hmm. He is the son of playwright Jim Cartwright. I'm sorry to have to tell you this. In C- 
series two of Tracy Beaker, James Cartwright was 17 years old. What? <laughs> yeah. Are you sorry? He's basically know. younger than the girl who plays Adele. Yeah. He he's 17 and he's playing a care worker trainee he, nathan that's yeah. nathan he that's not a 17 year old he doesn't look 17 he looks he looks like you know 28 28 <laughs> yeah he does i don't i think he looks really young i mean he's, he's still... younger he's younger than yeah he's younger than the girl who plays adele who is she's meant to be at the care home oh the fashiony one yeah. who left right yeah because she's only about two years younger than the woman who plays Elaine. No. Yeah. Stop it. I actually haven't checked this. My boyfriend told me this. Okay. But appa- yes, apparently she's like only a couple Shut of years up. younger than oh. the woman who plays Elaine. I mean, because I was noticing this series how young Elaine actually looks. Yeah. She's, oh, bless yeah. Elaine. They, her costume design is so on the nose. But so, so good, good. Though, isn't it? I love it. Um... I was like presumed, so frumpy. <laughs> I presumed that Nathan was there doing like apprenticeship. I presumed he was 17 or 18 years old. Really? Yeah. No. I I I assumed he was doing a co- like he is doing a course. But in my head he was a bit older. You would post it. It was like in play in place of him going to uni or something like that. Yeah. Well, so I like thought it was cuz this, this was before you had to do a- well well, like anyway, the, it yeah. doesn't. The but ca- you don't let seventeen-year-olds into care homes as trainee care workers. You let right. old. You? Do you know? Se- no, seventeen. <laughs> seventeen. You, you yeah. are. A you're, oh, you're, you're still old enough to be, be in the in care, a care home. Yeah. Oh yeah. To be fair, eighteen would be when I'd be like training them. Because okay, yeah, actually, that's a good point. You, seventeen, you could because be there. Because Adele being seventeen, where's your parents? Because Adele <laughs> moves into a bed sit on her own, so she would have had to be sixteen. Right. So I want to talk about um, James Cartwright some what more. Is actually, because it comes up a couple of times. A what bed is a bed sit? sit? Like. Uh, studio flat but worse oh, okay like you don't really have a kitchen you have a microwave oh so it's like a, a like a, a hotel room kind of yeah i'm gonna read this thing about james cartwright in a minute while we're talking about bed sits there's an episode that i mean i always found it very depressing is this the what, when bed was, episode? yeah when i was a kid and i find it even more depressing now what is that Adele's new address bet that's where tracy's gone that looks gorgeous. So, how are they all? Who? Everyone back home? Oh, them. A humongous pain in the backside sums it up pretty well. I'd have more privacy living in the zoo. You're so lucky to have your own place. Yeah. Come on, get it! Oh, what do you not want? Hi, Adele. We come to see how you're getting on, Adele. Oh, that's really sweet. We've just been talking about you all. You must be Lull and Bouncer. Sit down, everyone. Uh, move that bum, Tracy. Oh, that's it! Where are you going? Somewhere I'm not going to be sat on, squashed up and cried out by you lot. You can't go now, Tracy. This is just like being back at home. Exactly! So Tracy goes to visit Adele, and Adele is, like, eating cold beans from a can in her bed sit. Like a 16 year old girl, and Tracy visits and she's like, Oh wow, this is so cool, you're living on your own. And Adele's like, Yeah. And Tracy <laughs> goes back to the care home and she makes her own bed sit. She goes into the shed in the garden and just lives on her own and inspires all the kids to make their own bed sits. So they're basically just staying in their bedrooms and calling it their bed sits. No, can I come live with you? Sorry, Dolly, boys only. This is much better. Can I come and live with you too? Mm, no. Tracy? Bug off! Everyone's making bed sits. Are they? Danny said you get fed up being out here. But you're not, are you? Because I want to be in your bed sit too. Uh, no way, Flea Bye. Go and find your own place. Um, Dolly chooses the bathroom. It's like... Really everyone wants to, everyone wants to live in a bed sit now it's it's funny and it's depressing well yeah because also dolly locks herself in the bathroom with all the cleaning supplies and says i'm gonna make perfume yeah that that is an episode that happens yeah, yeah. and then oh, tracy gets her out because tracy's the one that kicked off the trend this is an article by kate kellaway in the guardian from 2009 so james cartwright 
in 2009 was in a production of The Rise and Fall of Little Voice, which is a play by Jim Cartwright. Mm -hmm. So, well, I'll, I'll read on. As soon as I meet Cartwright and son, I warm to them. Jim is engaging, funny and shy. He wears his trilby indoors. James is ebullient, energetic and dishy. They bat jokes to and fro. <laughs> Are you laughing at the word dishy? No, I'm nodding at the word and dishy. In, <laughs> and indulge in bouts of pretend boxing. Are you called after him? I asked James, gesturing at his dad. It's a family name. My father was James the first. I'm James the (laughs) third, says James, adding as an afterthought of Chorley, my manor. Neither Cartwright is about to forget his Lancashire roots. And his accent is great in the show. Cartwright and son sounds like a locksmith. It does. It does. When he's like a hobbler. There's a really big umbrella shop in London that I went past the other day and it fully is just it. That could have been them. God, there's a shop for fucking everything. There's an umbrella shop. You get a great... It's huge. Hang on. And when he, he says, I'm going to be a proper care worker. <laughs> I don't... There's C- three... Care care worker. Worker. <laughs> three people I know from Lancashire. Only one of them has the appropriate accent. The appropriate accent. <laughs> Sorry, listeners, if any of you are from Lancashire and you don't have the typical <laughs> Lancashire accent... Or just Northern. Laura thinks that you're inappropriate. No, no just like... You're like miscellaneous northern. <laughs> you're, oh, you're northern. Uh, are you sure? You sound generally British, not like northern. Like She's past me. I'm going to be a proper care worker. Yeah! So the rise and fall of Little Voice was, uh, like I said, a play by Jim Cartwright. And I did, I studied it in, in uni. And this is rare for me. It is the, the one text that I was supposed to read that I just straight up didn't read and I got by without having to. My brother um, did that for all of schooling and just asked me about the books. Harder to do with chemistry, <laughs> I imagine. Well, but. okay, no, not university. I can't fucking like, help with chemistry. <laughs> so James was the last of 30 contenders to audition for Billy. His dad, who was looking on, said, I was so proud. I forgot it was him. He looks at James. It was a stretch, but you stretched it in the right direction. James had not finished his audition when he heard, that's enough, thank you, from director Terry Johnson. So... Yeah, yes, nepotism, but he also goes on to say that he he did well in that audition because he knows the world. Like, he knows yeah. he, intimately what his dad's writing is all about. When I said nepotism, I fully was like, oh, that he just gave it to him. But if he had to go through an audition that the director approved of, I mean, that's that's at yeah. least a little yeah. bit less there's nepotism a, There's a difference between your dad being a player. Like, you still have to look, you still have to read them and see them to know them. Yeah. So it's it feel it's not like he hasn't done his research. He also says um he remembers being taken to a matinee of the original Little Voice when he was 7 at the cast picnic afterwards. I ate too much, stood on my head and was sick all over Pete Postlethwaite. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> I bet Pete was really kind about that though. <laughs> He's an actor. Yes. You've seen Brastoff, he was the dad in Brastoff. Oh, okay. Cool. Who gets some sort of lung condition from all the mining he's been doing <laughs> throughout his life. <laughs> Total aside, related to mining, they have in Australia they've banned working with this particular stone top that like eighty percent of kitchen countertops are made of because it inhaling the dust is basically equivalent to like asbestos. It is that dangerous. Wow! And they've known about it for decades, and no one's done fucking anything until Australia now. Well, if only all the cladding on our buildings in the UK could get that treatment, <laughs> that would be. <laughs> so that's Nathan. Who who do we need to talk about now? Uh, the fucking bandana girl. Oh, Amber! I didn't like her. First, I get sent to a dump. Then it's full of complete nutters! I kind of did. I thought she was really entertaining. Okay, she yeah, is she entertaining. Yeah. She she says... So she's like the naughty girl that she's arrives. She's rebel. <laughs> but she's like worse than Tracy because she's like in a quote-unquote gang and she sort of makes tracy do an initiation like tries to get her to steal stuff i think tracy's cheeky and generally well-meaning but amber was like nasty being nasty yeah she just wasn't coming at it from a fun place she was coming at it from a fuck all of you place well there's a attempt to with all of them there's an attempt to understand them yeah and there is a sort of in her first episode it's explained that she ran away from her last two care homes and she tries to do it in this one and then comes back and tracy finds out and doesn't mention it obviously that she didn't try that hard she actually wanted to come back um 
there's no reason given for that. And often when she's going at the other kids, it's in a needlessly nasty way. She's like, no one's going to foster you. Like, big families are the worst. They'll treat you like a slave and you'll come right back here. And it's just like, Tracy and Justine would do that to each other in a kind of less cutting way. They'll turn up this morning all smiley, smiley, and then by tea time, everyone will hate you. Then the two of you will have something in common. So why don't you tell us all about the joys of fostering their Miss Know-it-all? The promises, the forevers, and then, of course, the dumping. Who's that right woman that dumped you back here again? <laughs> anyway, she's history now. Just like you lot will be after the picnic. And Louise will be all alone again. Just like you were, Tracy. I, I like her because she's funny. There's, I've always remembered the line where Tracy's copying her because she wants to be like her. And Amber says, would you do what I said if I told you to go play in the traffic? <laughs> Let's see. Go play in the traffic. Well, she says it like, go play in the traffic. Let's see, shall we? Go play in the traffic. <laughs> she's Welsh. I, I did really enjoy her introduction. Like that, because they, they'd been watching a horror thing that they had made themselves and then everyone's like spooked at night um and everyone needs to pee at like the same time um so and then they they're like there's someone here and then amber bangs open a door and she's got the freaking hair gel that she's always going like what <laughs> it's a really good oh okay how did I snee- make so much effort to sneeze so quietly and not interrupt? And Laura immediately goes, I didn't oh, you- hear a thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it just looked like something else was wrong. I was just checking on you. Um, yeah, I just thought it was a really, really effective intro. Yeah. yeah. Who knows if that river is a river of tears, tears of sorrow and pity, cried by the lonely and brokenhearted. Or oh, a river of joy! Pouring forth into an ocean of love. What is certain is that? If you adopt me, I'll fit right in. I should be earning my keepers and actress in a matter of weeks. I don't like Louise. <laughs> I know you don't like Louise. Tell um, us. Just because she's like, uh, I just don't like drama kids. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fucking rich. <laughs> she's a TikTok influencer now, is she? I don't know. I don't know anything about her now. All I know she is, is she's a... the episode where she's like um, uh, Chelsea Padley. She's called um, Amber's personality. Um, that's really annoying. The episode where Tracy's they're all making these like um, video auditions to be fostered in Hollywood, and she's doing all of these acting bits. I hated that. I hate it. her thing is that she's like a, she wants to be an actress, but I might just find us. So- Hey, drama kids. You were one. Maybe this is where this is coming from. I wasn't a drama kid. She was an adjacent drama kid. You were I an wasn't adjacent. a drama kid. You because... did drama A level, Meg. Yeah, but my school didn't have it, so I you did, did it... drama A uni. Yeah, I did, but I'm not a kid. <laughs> you did drama <laughs> uni as well. Yeah, I'm not a kid though. No, no, no. no, okay, no I'm not a drama all right, kid. All right, all right, all right, all right. You did they drama A level. So Louise is about fucking what? Eleven, twelve. Maybe I mean, that. everyone, all the kids in this show <laughs> are <laughs> drama kids. Okay. But like, well, the thing is, like, so I'm not. I, I don't even need to defend myself because I fundamentally wasn't a drama kid, and I hate them. I did. <laughs> <laughs> you most deeply hate what you are. I did, but I'm not. <laughs> so... <laughs> I did find that episode where they were all auditioning to be fostered by Hollywood actors to be quite depressing. Yeah. So basically, they get the idea from Dolly, who's like doing these video messages to this Hollywood couple and they all copy and it's like, oh, this is actually quite grim. And then at the end, turns out Dolly knows exactly what she's doing. She's just getting free stuff because yeah, these she, actors feel bad for her. Amber's like, um, uh, what? yeah, so at one point she's got like a, she sent them an email or something and her and Justine and Amber are all in the room and... Amber's like laughing at her, like, oh, they're never going to adopt you. Who's going to, oh, like, they're never going to foster you. Who's going to want this? And Justine, bless her, is like, it's not funny. Like, this isn't funny. Yeah. This is sad. Like, it's sad that she's doing this or whatever. And Dolly leaves and she says, I know what I'm doing in a kind of way that in the episode makes you think, she genuinely thinks she's going to be fostered by these people. It's but really it got impressive the... of Dolly to stand up for Amber. Is like, 
this teenager is going for this six-year-old like you're never going to be fostered by these people but it gets to the end of the episode and she's been sent this box full of free stuff by these famous (laughs) people and she says they're not gonna foster me but boy do they feel bad about it (laughs) (laughs) hey justine check this out it's one of these begging emails that darling's been sending out how'd you get into her email she told me a password little sat hey listen to this Dear Kelly and Hank, I'm really looking forward to living in Hollywood. (laughs) Blah, blah. Listen, how big is my room going to be? It's just that I need to know how much to pack. Amber, that's not funny. Hey, half pint. What makes you think you're so special, eh? Do you think you're the only one with dreams? Leave her, Amber. Do you want to go to Hollywood? I want to be in a band. But I'm smart enough to realise it's never going to happen. Yeah, well, I know what I'm doing. I oh, love I love Dolly. And I love the relationship between Nathan and Dolly because Nathan, like, she's the youngest and Nathan's the youngest and he sort of looks after her. And there's an episode where Tracy has been challenged to tell the truth for six hours or whatever. And some fight! If that's the way you want it, I'll tell the truth. All day until six o'clock tonight and you'll be sorry. <laughs> You've just unleashed pure evil. And they're playing Truth or Dare at the beginning of the show and Nathan, who has this girlfriend, says that his favourite person in the world is someone beginning with D. And his bitch girlfriend... Is white... she a bitch? No, she's not, but she has white dreadlocks. She's only... Yeah, but Which she's... she's white with dreadlocks. Yes, that's... She has white dreadlocks. She's white with dreadlocks. <laughs> she, um... But she doesn't have dreadlocks in the sense that it's her hair that's dreadlocks. She has it in the sense of like that 2000s fashion thing where people would have their hair put into dreads with like... Wait, was it the like fabric spiral thing? Yeah. 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 Um, Which I don't think that's dreads, no. um, But she's obviously thick because she thinks that this D person is another woman. I don't know how you could hate her though because she's only got (laughs) about three minutes of screen time. (laughs) She's She's clearly... obviously stupid. Who is this D person you like so much better than me? No, look, you, you've got it wrong. You've got it wrong if you think I ever want to see you again. She's hopefully also at, like a child, so if he's 17. Yeah, she's like 17 or something. 17. No, he might not be 17. He was played by a 17-year-old. That's the thing. I, I would like to know how old he is supposed to be. Yeah. Maybe there's a birthday episode in the future and we find out. There isn't. Oh. <laughs> Do you know what is so, maybe he has a wiki page <laughs> it's so sad is that in uh i don't know at what point in the whole show we find out why because we spoke about this last time why justine is in that care home hmm. because she's got a dad who comes to visit her but he gets married like he gets married to another woman and something that makes me like well obviously gets married doesn't get married to his own daughter <laughs> um <laughs> Something that made me really sad, really sad <laughs> about this um, ep- this series was that people, they were, the kids were saying to her like, because she was given, she was asked to be a bridesmaid, she was given a bridesmaid dress, and then um, they she didn't like the bridesmaid dress, so Adele changed it for her, and then it got food thrown on it, so she didn't want to go to the wedding, and she they, she said, oh, Carrie, is it, was it Carrie? Carrie, yeah. Carrie's going to be upset with me, and, you know, she's not going to want me as a daughter now, and she's kind of, like, doing all of these things so that Carrie's going to want her to go and live with them, which doesn't happen, and it yeah. makes me really, really sad. It, it doesn't mean I don't... You, what? You're still number one girl. Dad, I really like Carrie, and I'm going to make her really like me. And then one day we can be a proper family. Oh, cry. I'll catch you later. <laughs> My sweet. Come on, put it on the show up. I wish some people wouldn't do that. Well, we found out because of the wiki page that she's in a care home because after the death of her mum, her dad couldn't handle it. Right. So, yeah, he's put it there. I always assumed he was just working abroad. So I checked... It says Nathan's born in the 1980s, so that makes him somewhere between 15 and 24. <laughs> okay. I mean, so was James Cartwright. Yeah, uh, yeah. So Justine and Tracy don't have a lot of venom towards each other this series. I think it, there's too much else going on because the thing in series one is that it's Justine, well, the thing that's always been and is now in my mum, Tracy Beaker, is that it's Justine versus Tracy. But they're kind of just 
ambivalent towards each other for the most part in this series. And when Justine has um, locked herself in the shed crying about her ruined bridesmaid dress, Tracy is the one that gets her to come out and go to the wedding. Justine, they've gone. It's just me. You have to go to the wedding. Well, Karen will think you don't care. She'll hate me now anyway. She won't. I bet she'll even take you home to live with her one day. Listen, all you've got to do is be nice and, well, wait a while. I'm sick of waiting for grown-ups. Dumping grandkids to his way. Exactly. That's why we're so good at it. Come out or you'll be in the dumping ground with me forever. And I couldn't stand that. Because it's always Tracy that fixes things, that's it. Or, well, often I've heard seen... that ruins things, but she always yeah yeah. Them. I've seen Dolly do that a little a little bit. Like Dolly, she, oh, Dolly no. is so cheeky. Yeah. Well, actually, no, she wasn't fixing things. She was playing a part in a scheme. Never mind. I love her little hairdo. I know. With the I forgot entirely about those little fabric hair ties you have when you're a kid. The that's... little knots. Yeah. So yeah. that your 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 hair can't catch on the hair ties. So they're all fabric and they don't stretch very far. Do you know the ones I mean? Yeah. 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 Oh, she's so cute. And her and Duke as well. Duke in this series is just like the foil for everything. He reminded like... me of Miles. <laughs> Duke, you're cuddly. No, scratch that. I have to tell the truth. You're fat, but if you dare change, we'll make you regret it. Oh! Like, Duke is always the one that is the butt of everyone's jokes in this series. I choose. No dares. Uh, I'm still having nightmares after the last Tracy Beaker dares. I sicked up the worms they made me. Uh, you sicked them over me. Dumping ground rule number 27. Duke, be fast with the sick bucket when a kid calls you in the night. Dolly and Tracy are, pay- are playing hide and seek and she hides in Duke's car. And yes. Tracy Beaker lost me! <laughs> Tracy Beaker, and she you're like, trying to lose me again! I think she fell asleep because she wakes up in the car and screams. Like, yeah. you've, got, you've got some explaining to do. So have you. You said no eating between meals. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, she's got an ice cream. She's yeah. playing hide and seek. She hides in the car boot, wakes up on a different street. <laughs> yeah. You'd be terrified. Yeah. <laughs> just, where the fuck am I? And it's like, yeah, I just, I, that's why I was, because I think she's so cute. And she's so like clever. She's like, I, what are you you're eating? What I are you? could have done with more interaction between Amber and Adele, because they're kind of, the two oldest like let's say they're both 16 amber wants to be really independent and she's amber's younger than that just or else she would have left if she was able to leave i think she would have left and like she wants to be in a band adele can leave if she wants and she is in a band and amber is doing so much more like she's doing a lot and i just want adele probably thinks she's so pathetic (laughs) i I could have done with more stuff between them Mm. what else have we got to say about this series Louise's family that um, oh, foster yeah. her. Oh my god! Really shows how the inflation of the last twenty years. Oh my god! So this is so weird. You know how like little lines stick in your head, like yeah. little sound bites. Me and Meg had the exact same one from this exact episode. So I was trying to find it, and it was like I started saying the line to Meg, and she finished it. Um, Aww. Tracy um, essentially goes go who goes on this like. Uh, picnic. Louise is going on a yeah a family picnic with the potential foster family. Yeah, and Tracy goes and she's quizzing the mum and dad um, to see if she thinks they're suitable, and <laughs> she asks how much the dad like how much money the dad makes, and he says two fifty. She says two hundred and fifty thousand pounds a year. That's great or whatever. And he goes no, two fifty an hour. hour. I, I don't actually think he is Welsh, but he was Welsh in my head. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> and she's like, two fifty an hour. And he says, oh, well, it could have been worse. Some paper rounds only pay two pounds. <laughs> it's not so bad. Some people only get two pounds. Yeah. Like, that's yeah, he what definitely remember wasn't him saying. He definitely that Welsh Yeah, but in Welsh. both of our heads, he was. <laughs> I, I, that whole interaction, I loved... A, the parents could see right through Tracy. Yeah. And I, I liked that. Um, and... Then the dad's like, "No, I do know what it's like." I've that whole interaction. I, I actually yeah. Really Tracy's liked. like, "You've got no idea what it's like for kids in care." And the dad's like, "I do know exactly what it's like." <laughs> in my head, he's Welsh. I don't know. I mean, it's more likely than not he was Cardiff. Yeah. He then um, Tracy's 
going on about like oh you don't know what it's like because he's making jokes like clearly i mean clearly he does get paid more than two he's not he's not on a paper round he's making yeah. a joke when and when was two pound fifty even legal to pay people well it's legal to pay or it was in probably in 2004 legal to pay a, a, a paper a child oh yeah, 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 yeah. i'm like an adult no he's okay. that, he's joking no, i know he's, he's joking. joking i'm just curious. they're a lovely family but he he Tracy's like, oh, you're not taking this seriously. You don't get it. And he's like, I do. I do get it. And that's when you realise he yeah. was also in care. And there's a and lovely... Tracy's looking very silly. There's yeah. a lovely line where Tracy's like, you're not taking this seriously. And he looks at Louise and there's like a shot of Louise playing Frisbee and he goes, oh, some of us are. Yeah. And like, oh. he's like, I always, because of that, I always wanted a happy a house full of happy kids. Like, like her. That's, yeah. yeah. And that's so, that's also like, that's so sweet. You can look after my mate on that. That's rubbish money. It's not bad. Other paper rounds only pay two quid. Hey, no one's taking this fostering thing seriously. Oh, some of us are. And the dad, not the dad, but because Tracy wants to go on the picnic with them, the granddad (laughs) volunteers to stay behind, to to make room in the car. He stays behind at the The most gullible granddad ever. And he finds Lol and Bouncer and he's like, there's more to life than video games. And he like takes them out into the garden. <laughs> We've not spoken about Lol and Bouncer yet and we really should. They're I funny. think they're very funny. They're very funny. I think they're both really brilliant actors. Yeah. Especially Lol, because he, he seems to be a little bit younger. I don't know if that if he actually is, but the, I think the character is meant to be mm. younger. Um, and I always remembered Lol being older, but that's because I remember the later seasons better and watching this i'm like i can't believe it they're babies they're they, so young they play off each other really well so that you can they tell really that the actors are really good friends as well we could give them the tracy bigger treatment and see how we rate exploding onto your screens the chaos it is the full beaker no really we could test them out with stuff like patience and understanding and dolly can test their panic button not up to the challenge tracy finds out now and doesn't get hurt because any scene with those two in them i know i'm going to enjoy they're, they're like a little so, double act. yeah they're a little double like they're very buddy buddy and yeah and he's, when they were doing um elaine does an interview for nathan's assessment and every other kid is alone but those two they're together always yeah. together it's really cute for a few i don't know how long it was like maybe a year a few months they were the actors kieran joyce and ben hansen they were cbbc office presenters and i tried last night to find a video of it and i can't and if anyone has that i would i mean i would love i mean i'll try and put it in this episode but i'm so annoyed that i can't find this on youtube i thought it would be easy to find if you know when it is it should be on bob (laughs) (laughs) or it's just opened a juice smoothie can I yeah. try your lumpy juice? Can I try your lumpy juice? Yeah. Well, the thing is, Zora, what is a smoothie? If not, <laughs> not a, a lumpy, lumpy juice. juice. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. <laughs> what is it? What's in it? Yeah, it's not as smooth as you expect it to be. What is it? Because usually, usually this company do very smooth. <laughs> but so it's, it's pineapple, mango, apple, orange, banana. Oh, it's got banana in it. Okay. It, you really can't taste the banana. Mm, that is pulpy. Yeah. That is bits. Yeah. So Ben Hansen, I couldn't find anything about where Kieran Joyce is now, but um, Ben Hansen, if you Google him, what you actually get is lots of tabloid gutter rags talking about how ripped he is now. Is he? Uh, yeah, he is. Yeah. Because he was like... Because he was the chubbier one, and I think the son or whatever was like oh look at him now you won't believe it it's like well actually i will because what was he like 15 yeah in, in tracy vega and oh yeah he is fucking yeah well, he he's, is he's a adult man now yes so. he's an adult man now <laughs> and he is the welsh ambassador for balls to cancer don't laugh at balls it's a cancer Sorry, charity no, I was laughing. <laughs> oh my god um um <laughs> Um, <laughs> listener, she's being sarcastic. Yeah, yeah, just so that's fully clear. <laughs> I'll I'll decide what to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes I, I've gotten better at knowing when I say things. Look on your face, like whether it's going to be. It. <laughs> I've gotten better at that. I like to give the sorry. I'm eating. I like to give <laughs> the illusion that we don't cut anything out because we've put clips. If you haven't noticed, I assume if you listen. <laughs> you don't care <laughs> but we've put clips of 
some conversations that have happened on specifically this one I'm thinking of on Instagram and some people really didn't like it <laughs> and I like to give the impression that everything we say goes in no if you didn't like that there's much much worse stuff that didn't make the cut I mean I think I think we can actually name that clip we we asked the question is Tots TV a thruple and some people thought that was disgusting our little sexualization of children but then we make a fucking instagram post about them doing drugs and that's I, fine i yeah. never i never considered them to be kids well no. a they are puppets yeah. for a start we would never ever do that about actual children B, number two yeah. they've got a house they've got a donkey <laughs> and, and they pay rent <laughs> number three um, they i think mortgage. they own it outright to be to, honest to, yeah. um Tom definitely has a job. Yeah. <laughs> Look at him. He's got one a... of them has got to have a job. <laughs> Number three, just because you're in a couple doesn't mean you're having sex. Yeah, I do think. Doesn't mean it's a sexual relationship. I kind of think if you are outraged by us saying, are they a thruple because you think that's too sexual, Hector projector, maybe? I think you're projecting a little okay, bit. Okay, that's what I thought you were I mean, I like, okay, surely. I there's something a bit more disgusting going on in your own mind but because well, it's like do you know what happens to little kids all the time because this has happened to my nine-year-old cousins like oh is that your girlfriend what? yeah it... which is still not okay but i, I feel like that's weird just leave them it alone is. don't pressure yeah. kids into being straight out for but tilly tom and tiny are not kids they're a uh, secret third thing they're objects <laughs> <laughs> they're objects. They're objects. Secret third option. <laughs> neither, neither adults nor kids or adolescents. They're not they're... alive. They don't have heartbeats, guys. So Next stop. No, no, no. Someone <laughs> shoves their hand inside them and makes them move. That's what they are. Do they? Are they not like? No, no they're, they're not marionettes. De- um, maybe for the purposes of when they have legs, but they're definitely <laughs> they're definitely puppets because in the episode we talked about how they have had to they had to cut into oh, the floorboards yeah. to get people below. Them. I love their chubby little baby legs. <laughs> their legs are so weird. Every time there's a shot of one of them, I'm always like, oh, it's because they're so limp. <laughs> someone, left a com- someone left a comment on one of the clips. It was like the- she tagged someone and said, "This is good leg content." Or something. <laughs> I'm so funny. They also have like they don't have discernible feet they they have like hooves <laughs> like <this. laughs> why did she say it like that hooves <laughs> we like, have to like go that. on the roof because <laughs> it's like they've got little caps on the bottom of their legs so you know hooves <laughs> they've got cloven <laughs> yeah they haven't got feet <laughs> you're so funny hooves <laughs> hooves <laughs> Oh, she's looking all sad because we're laughing at her pronunciation. One time, I pronounced a word correctly. Oh, this is this was bad. <laughs> oh, actually. she loves this, doesn't no, she? No, this was it. bad. I feel I still to this day feel bad about this because neither of you. Yeah, yeah the chagrin yeah. story. So I said the word chagrin, which is how you fucking say it. Me and Meg thought it was chagrin. Yeah, I think that's fair. I do think that's yeah. fair. I'm not, I don't have an issue with you thinking it's Chagrin. I have an issue with you and Elsie them on a three plus minute bit. Yeah, we did like this extended mime improv about I'm... how Laura is wrong, which is a ridiculous thing. It's even more embarrassing when you consider that we were wrong. I don't think it is embarrassing. I think it's embarrassing that Laura got so upset about it. You no, just... she didn't. I If it was yeah, me... she, did. she I... fucking left the road. Grew up. I'd have been more upset. I think she's being very forgiving. Would you have been? I mean, I would have eventually forgiven you. Just get your phone out, play the actual pronunciation. You guys were off doing a bit out onto the balcony. Yeah, we we took it out onto the balcony. It was quite extended. Was it? It was quite funny. (laughs) It was a two-act play. Being right over a word is what you want to get upset over. That's your prerogative. I don't care. She's She's not upset that... She was right. She's upset that we were making so much of it. it and? It, it, I really funny. didn't like how it made me feel, so I got upset. I don't care how it made you feel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I think, calm down, just a joke, we were wrong. You've got you've got the knowledge of being right through the but, whole thing. But we were wrong <laughs> in the most emphatic way. Yeah, but it was still funny, though. It was very funny. <laughs> Did yes. you not, at uni get kind of upset with the sheer quantity of people dunking on how you as a northerner pronounce stuff oh uh, we're not yeah, getting no, into this no but okay, this that's, that's that's accent based we just thought you were saying a word wrong 
Well, because people listen and yeah, no, help me. True. Right, let's talk about... Because <laughs> we, we need to do... this. people on our roof. Right, let's... Or they're roof. in my room. <laughs> they're, in, they're in There are the people doing... Space. They're in the Working secret away. attic. <laughs> but even we have not Can been in. Can you put some storage up there, please, guys? <laughs> yeah, that'd be great, actually. Imagine if a guy fell through the ceiling right now. Well, we're assuming it's men. This could... It could be like giant rats. We I'm don't know. I'm sure my granddad once accidentally put his foot through the... He went into oh, my granddad's done that, yeah. yeah put his foot I'm the terrified ceiling. of doing that when you're i'm in the attic and i'm like uh, don't walk on the insulation right yeah. ben's <laughs> and uncle. yeah um yeah so ben's parents are away for a weekend and his aunt and uncle her is childless aunt and uncle yeah i like but tracy thinks they're taking him out for a really like everyone's going on a day out except her and she's really bored and turns out they're not taking him out they're actually struggling for ideas for what to do with this kid to the point where his uncle has suggested that they clean out the garage together wow a fun exciting yeah while activity. they while they can talk and bond i think his uncle is really sweet uh, well, he is, no he is really sweet but cleaning out the garage is a shit idea to yeah. entertain a kid the aunt is like oh what did you like doing when you were a kid and he's like spending the weekend with my dad <laughs> no it's fair it is very sweet but ben rings tracy and is like beaker help me so this is when obviously J- dolly is stuck in juke's car but juke drives her to ben's house and ben hasn't explained to his aunt that she's in care so he says so her aunt thinks that she has her family has yeah. staff yeah she's so, like oh the staff are gonna bring tracy over and she's yeah like, tracy's staff are gonna, staff. Yeah. yeah and then like tracy gets out the car and obviously she's her like normal self to do like do you have to drive me around in your shitty car and then says to the aunt the staff have to check the people out or like check adults or whatever um so her aunt doesn't realize she's in care and Tracy does her usual my mum's a famous actress yeah, yeah, routine. Yeah. So yeah. she obviously believes it. She's like, Ben hasn't told you much about me, has he? Um <laughs> I'm gonna use that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tracy's like um pooing all the ideas until they eventually go to the beach. And at which point she's like off running, doing like playing around doing her own thing, and her aunt has like started to say oh this is just what tracy likes ben you don't have to go along with everything that she does like she's starting to get a bit annoyed with tracy and tracy then runs up to ben and accidentally knocks a hot dog out of his hand house what or is it an ice cream ice cream it's something like that and the aunt stands up and has a go at tracy she's like listen you're spoiled and rude and entitled and ben doesn't have to do everything that you want to do blah 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 and Tracy runs off. And the and uncle, bless him, is like, she's a famous person's daughter. She could get kidnapped. Yeah. We'll never live this down. Yeah. We'll be sued. <laughs> and Ben's like, oh, you don't know anything about kids, do you? Like, bless him, really sticks up for yeah. her. Yeah, because they have wholesale bought into Tracy's shtick. Yeah. And um, so Ben obviously tells them what's going on. Later, they show up at the dumping ground and apologise to Tracy and think like offer to take them out her out another time or something at the weekend and in the next episode they have uh, like things have escalated they've They're escalated and they're saying that they're interested in fostering her now i think this is lovely of them but i also think like demonstrably they don't really know how to handle kids so i don't know if this is actually the well, wisest i think they do know how to handle tracy That's because, the thing, because she isn't the... a child is she she she's like got this attitude of an older person and they seem to handle it very well and the rest of the kids are like testing them out like, i love like that. testing <laughs> With you know, humor humor uh, uh, trustability trustability like, trust, yeah like, trustworthiness, trustworthiness. trustworthiness that's it I, what, <laughs> how <laughs> What is like how kind of how stupid they are like if they buy a really like how knowing yeah yeah Yeah. um and i I thought that was i loved that they all got together and went right team we've got to test them they're gonna take tracy we need to make sure they can handle at the end when they have like a food fight they're laughing about it so it's like oh they're perfect um yeah and they're very nice people but ben's very upset about it because they they say something to him like oh don't tell her yet or something so clearly he knows something about this arrangement that we don't know and as that, does elaine that thing is that they are going to move to scotland so tracy would have to go with them and but so far tracy only thinks it's a holiday yeah so ben like is 
upset that they're going to take his best friend away, basically. This comes off. Tracy will be your new cousin, eh? We thought you'd be happy. I am. I'm very happy that you're taking my best friend hundreds of miles away to go and live in Scotland where I'll never get to see her. And then, yeah, we have this whole thing of, like, Elaine is basically like, this is perfect. She's trying to get Tracy Foster. This is a wonderful line where Tracy is in Elaine's office and says, you finally realise that your job is to get me rich, attractive foster parents. <laughs> Good job, Elaine. Yeah. But then Jenny basically, Jenny says to Elaine, like, you haven't told Cam about any of this. And, and Elaine, to be fair, rightly yeah. says, this is none of Cam's business. Cam brought her back here. And I'm trying to get Tracy a second chance. Yeah. Like, the thing with that is, like, because Cam didn't want to necessarily put Tracy back there, right? But it's also, like, a care home is not a, like, a children's kennel. That's not, yeah. like, you can't just drop off a kid there for a couple weeks while your house gets repaired. It's a commitment. If, yeah. you, if you want the kids, you have to make it work. You have to well, demonstrate spoke, that you can make it work. We spoke a lot in the last tracy beaker episode about elaine and how she represents the bureaucracy of the system like there's a lot of episodes where she comes in and she's trying some theory and sometimes they work to be fair like she gets the kids to do action therapy and she brings cam <laughs> in to do some like role play stuff with tracy and it actually it does get them to be friends again but only because they're both turning against elaine together right this role play tracy is cam and cam is tracy now let's try breakfast Oh, I overslept. Here's your cereal. Sorry, I forgot to buy milk. Oh, my life is so hard. Oh, boo-hoo, boo-hoo. I'm not eating this without milk. In fact, I'm not eating it at all. Drop everything and take me out for breakfast. Tracy, I'll have to go to work. Even though it's not really work, more just like playing around. Call in sick. Take me to a fun fair. Behave yourself or I'll lock you up in the cupboard under the stairs and feed you dog food. What? Come on. Or do you want to go back to the dumping ground? This is wonderful. Hang on, I'm just going to get the anger management tools. <laughs> Dog food. It's all right, pop <laughs> It's fun being you. It's fun being bad. Yeah, no, where I was going with this was, I th do you think Elaine is right? Like, it isn't Cam's business. Her job is to get Tracy a stable home and these are they are a good option for her. But, but Jenny rings Cam and tells behind her behind Elaine's, Elaine's back. back and Elaine is like driving down the road and Cam cuts, cuts her, her off, off with her car. in her iconic red car yeah she like she's got like an old style beetle and she like pulls around in front of um <laughs> Tracy says in series one it's a hairdryer <laughs> <laughs> yeah pulls up in front of Elaine's car gets out and shouts at her through the window and Elaine like, it, slams her hand yeah. on the window and Elaine is like uh, number one that was which it is it was ludicrous that was dangerous you shouldn't have done yeah. that <laughs> also she was like it's none of your business and I've got an appointment we'll talk about this later yeah that was a very dangerous thing to do Cam how dare you try and get Tracy Foster behind my back Jenny called you she had no right how to... could you do that Tracy and I are... we lived together you didn't want her you sent her back I had every right to send her to Scotland she's not a parcel she's my you're what my... Exactly. We'll discuss this later. I've got an appointment. I, I, I liked seeing how invested Cam still I was. I really liked that as well. But I also liked that in front of the kids, in front of Tracy, all of that was gone. Cam was like, I am still, I still love you. I'm still your friend. But she, says, she, she wasn't show she wasn't being like no don't go with them right no yeah when so cam turns up and all the kids are there and the two potential foster parents are there and cam is to tracy like i couldn't love you more if you were my own daughter yeah. but they're they're really good people i won't let them foster me if you don't want me to you know i can't give you what they can i don't need lots of stuff all i ever wanted was for you to I couldn't love you more if I was your mum. I wish I could say let's try again, but... I'm sorry. It's OK. I do want to be your friend. Always. And Tracy says, tell me what to do. And Cam takes her by the shoulders and puts her in front of these people. Then... <laughs> Jenny says to Elaine, 
you didn't tell Tracy she was moving to Scotland. So obviously, Tracy I don't, I don't runs think... after Cam and well, doesn't is, go with them. This is what I said in the first series, is that Cam also is having to learn to be the person that Tracy yeah. needs. And yeah. she does, she's, she does, she goes on a really big journey. Big she is series. the perfect person for, it's, I adore the Cam and Tracy stuff. Yeah, me I too. love it. It would be, uh, just speculatively, I think it would be extremely difficult for Tracy to move to a new place entirely cut off from this whole group of people just uh, not that it wouldn't be possible and not that it wouldn't maybe in the long run help her but i think at first it would it would be super difficult for her to completely relocate Mm. because i think it'd be difficult for her to adjust without any of the also because she's she's such a rampant liar she needs people there that know that she's bullshitting or else you know what i really enjoy and what i never really noticed when i was young and i was watching it there should be more talk about this i think there's a lot of talk about the decades long tracy justine rivalry but oh my god the workplace bitchiness between jenny and elaine i need to talk to cam about this fostering she and tracy this has got nothing to do with cam lawson i don't want her influencing tracy are you making a mistake it's my call and don't you dare phone cam behind my back it's just Mm. glorious to watch like don't you dare go behind my back charlene white or what she called jenny what's her name I liked all the um, adult bits where it's like just the adults talking to each other. Yeah, I really yeah, liked yeah. seeing that. And I was like, oh, interesting. Which completely went over my head. Well, yeah. yeah. I'm not telling them that they have to stay in on a Saturday. That's the whole point of action therapy, to intervene in a dramatic way to get their attention. Oh, you'll get that, all right. What they need is empowerment. What they need are homes. Exactly. Personally, I just think that if anything's going to help, then it's worth trying. What? Yeah! Yeah! What is more important, one Saturday or the rest of your life? One Saturday! You can't do this, Elaine! Yes, I can, Tracy. I can do it because I care. I saw repeated outfits, which I always like to see in shows. I love that. Because it's like, yeah. Tracy basically wears one outfit all the time. Oh, I liked, I loved Tracy's longer hair. I thought her hair looked so cute this season. Yeah, she's a very cute child. Yeah, she is. Oh yeah, her hair's gorgeous yeah. in this season. I've got a note here that I I wrote down. I think it was in I think it was in like one of the very early episodes. I think it's one of Lol's first lines. We spoke about how there's a lot of dark stuff in series one, like they're all making jabs at each other, but the jabs are a lot darker than normal kids. They're like, oh, you've got no one in the world, <laughs> like really dark stuff. There's <laughs> there's a bit. <laughs> this series where they're they're doing they're planning on doing something naughty and lol says what are they gonna do put us in a home (laughs) (laughs) put you in the workhouse (laughs) um i noticed this and then i realized it was filmed in cardiff so it all made sense but like all the naughty kids in Tracy Peaker are Welsh yeah they are you've got you've got the Wellards the the Wellards we've not spoken about the the Laura has not yet experienced the Wellards oh my god but yeah, yeah there's all like the naughty group kids are of three siblings, kids, apparently. Siblings. Yeah, apparently siblings. They're, they're at least half siblings. <laughs> um, and yeah, they're all Welsh. And, yeah. like, but aggressively the, so. The goth group. Uh, I have a question, actually, because I didn't notice it in any of the episodes that I watched. Do, do they go to school? Or is this yeah, all in, like, do. summer? Yeah, yeah, there are episodes where you see them, like, walking home from school together. Like, there's oh, a, where you, you see, see Louise um justine and tracy all wearing like their school dresses and there was a um, parents evening episode in series one okay. that we discussed oh, as yeah. well I, yeah because I, I just remembered seeing tracy in the like summer dress yeah yeah, yeah yeah um yeah you've got amber you've got the wellards you've got lol and bouncer to an extent but they're not they're not nasty no they're, they're really nice i love the lol and tracy relationship and especially in the later seasons when they're both older, like they're, they're, there's a very sibling dynamic between them that I really enjoy. Yeah. Hey, Trace, come for supper? What's the matter? Just hay fever. Oh. Is Amber being a pain again? Well, you can't stay out here all night. And Shanvon's spiky face. Hey, Trace, don't get mad. Get even. I think that is. Mm-hmm. I think we've covered everything that we need to about Which is series two good because the construction is um, 
occurring yeah, yeah. this is going to be a difficult edit but um sorry if if there is some banging in this i do apologize we tried can, our hardest um, the, the pre-roll bit before the intro music can just be all a collection of banging. <laughs> <laughs> series two is about cam bringing tracy back shenanigans happen yes in, at the Nathan. end introducing a bunch of new characters then Nathan at the end is so sexy like i'm, I'm sorry he's like got he's a child i actually feel bad saying this because i actually said this about him last night but he's got me su- too before i realized but he's got such an attractive energy yeah he's got a nice you know, way I mean, about him he's, he's got, got a nice he has, manner got a nice manner he's good with kids which is always an attractive quality he's a, a young man that has voluntarily decided to train to be a coward yeah and he he's he's so much fun i love him it sounds like he'd be right at home in the repair shop (laughs) (laughs) he looks a bit like handyman like he's not my type but i think he's got a really attractive like i have a lot of friends who that is their type like sort of a ratty looking heroin chic He's, I'm not he's, wrong. No, he's a bit ratty looking. His no, you're laughing, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's 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 the rattiness of 2004. It was it was in. Yeah, but he's he's so cute. He's so he is. sweet. He is. And then at the end of the series, she almost gets fostered again, but she realizes Cam is still the one, and that is the arc mm-hmm. of series two. We've done it. Well done, everyone. I can't wait for the Wellards. Two down, three to go. <laughs> I thought it was more than that. Are we gonna There's do... five seasons of the story of Tracy Beaker. Okay. Then you've got like tracy beaker returns which i think is too recent for us to cover tracy but maybe beaker, we will uh, pudsy <laughs> a comic really i think so i'm not doing a whole episode I'm, on a I'm comic kidding, really. kidding, kidding, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ain't doing that did, did you want us to do the mum tracy beaker stuff just as no, a, not it's really. very recent it's yeah, not no, i know i know yeah. just hey, follow up this is them now <laughs> i mean we do occasionally We've spoken about it with regards to like how Tracy and Justine are still an ongoing thing. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, thank you for joining us, everyone, for this good episode. Morning. And good morning. <laughs> Hope you have a lovely day. This episode has been like picking fucking teeth. We've like every five, ten minutes we've had to switch off <laughs> and then remind no, 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 no. I, li- I expected it to happen as I was speaking. It's been so annoying. Yeah. The problem is that normally this construction starts at like 8.45. It starts at <laughs> 8, 8.45, 8, 9 o'clock. Like the re- like beginning of the working day. There have been mornings where it feels like they're drill is in my room like it's in your skull like it's honestly. hurting my like it doesn't sound outside it sounds inside yeah but to, so when when it gets to like 11 o'clock 12 o'clock and nothing has happened you kind of think you're safe <laughs> clearly, clearly not today <laughs> nope i also feel bad for them it's fucking minus four today what are you guys doing for the rest of the day i, I might have a nap oh look at you yeah it's, it's elsa's day off it's my yeah. day off <laughs> yeah. um i have to go and i guess not teach but participate in a class yeah i wonder if any of my students listen i hope not be, <laughs> that would be embarrassing yeah, would, well right. <laughs> oh yeah a really sicky teaching assistant <laughs> <laughs> piss shit and vomit <laughs> yeah sorry for naming our anniversary special piss shit and vomit but you know i'm not sorry there's a lot we're of- real <laughs> In fact, as we've been sitting here friend of the pod emily has sent me a piss story in fact should i read it yes on my is emily okay what she's yeah she's fine emily okay, is our medical consultant okay. of the pod right last time <clears throat> 
what is wrong with you? I'm going to come over there and I'm going to strangle you. That was supposed to be an announcement noise, but you start talking. Last time I needed an emergency piss, I was driving on the motorway, but I'd been sat stationary in the car for about 15 minutes because of a crash and I was so desperate and the traffic wasn't moving. So I ran from my car, which was stopped in the fast lane. So the furthest from the grass, I got my pants down. I was mid piss and the fucking traffic started moving. So I forced the piss out as fast as I could, pulled my trousers half up. The people stuck in my car. (laughs) Stuck behind my car were beeping at the empty car. I sprinted, <laughs> fell face down, pants around my ankles in the middle of the motorway <laughs> with a shit ton of angry traffic beeping at my car in the way. Got bruised and my ego has never taken a bigger hit. Emily! Oh, Emily. I'm so sorry. Dr. Emily. Have I, did I Dr. mention... Emily. Did I mean, Like, in the... Peppa Pig episode. Did I mention about when we were driving, uh, when me and my boyfriend were driving back from Bruges and he'd been holding a piss in for like an hour and a half and he pulled over on the hard yes. shoulder of the French motorway, but it wasn't like a full hard shoulder. Oh, God. And I was like sat in the car and it was 70 mile an hour winds and he... Scared for your life. Scared for the, my life because he... Because we were on the other side of the road. So I was in the tr- way of the traffic and a massive lorry came past oh, and rocked God. the car. And I was like, could you piss faster, I mean, please? meanwhile, your your boyfriend is trying to piss in 70 mile an hour winds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really surprised that your boyfriend doesn't have a piss bottle in the car. He that, that really surprises me that he doesn't just have it ready. Even if you've got a piss bottle <laughs> in the car, it is quite hard to piss into a bottle when you're going... No, I know. You know, 100 kilometres an hour down the French motorway. That's fair, but is it easier to piss into a bottle or piss in 70 mile an hour wind? Well, he was, he's, because he, the, the car was like at the edge of the motorway and it was, there was like a fence. So he was like in between the car and the fence. So it might not have been that windy uh, in that little space. Little space <laughs> between the fence, the car, encasing his penis from the wind. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't know. I was too busy with my fingers in my ears, with my eyes, cl- my eyes closed, so I couldn't see you the traffic. You paint such a beautiful picture. <laughs> I think he's so lucky to have me. And it seems to me you lived your life like a penis in the wind. <laughs> what? Lauren? Penis in the wind? A well-known song by Elton John. About our die. Thank you for listening, everyone. Thank you for listening. Thank you. We are not sure what we're doing next, depending on the date. Bagpuss? Yes, if we record Bagpuss next, it will be out in time for the 50th, 50th anniversary, anniversary. Which is the 12th of February. Exciting. And we're all, well, I know I am. I don't know about you two, but I'm we a have, ridiculous Bagpuss fan. We have Bagpuss content in the house. We've got a record. We've got a Bagpuss. Well, that's for next time, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Thank you for listening. Let's do the socials. Okay. And oh, oh there my it is. God. There it is. You know what? Let's just do it. Yeah, I mean, if, Let's they, just do it. <laughs> if they're not clear on the socials, they're on the socials. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thoughts TV is thoughts underscore underscore TV. Thoughts TV is thoughts underscore underscore TV. Do you mean Twitter? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Twitter is thoughts underscore underscore TV. TV. Instagram is thoughts TV. The O is a zero. TikTok is thoughts TV pod. Uh, what else have we got? Gmail. Gmail is uh, thoughts TV 2002 at gmail.com. Discord. The server is just called thoughts TV, but the link is on the socials. We've got a coffee if you want to donate money. Thanks, Tom Taylor for thank you Tom. thanks Tom Pete money Give a coffee each yes I know instead of a coffee split three ways a coffee each and you know <laughs> I'm gonna tell you exactly now what that money is gonna go on it's it was five degrees overnight it's gonna go on the extra heating we've had on minus the, five the, yeah sorry minus five <laughs> the extra heating we've had on the last couple of days because we're freezing yep thank you so much for listening have a great day everyone yeah, have a great day and see you next time. <laughs>